Today, I'm going to be putting right something that I got wrong a little while ago. So first task is to remove all of this crap off the top of the engine. You need to remove the engine cover, the intake, this part here, and get right in down to this nasty little mess that I made, uh, which is the, uh, the pressure sensor port coming off the exhaust manifold. Now, uh, let's just get that done and get a bit of a closer look. Right, now we can get a bit more access into this part of the engine. You can see what I did last time round. So um, when I repaired the timing chain, um, probably 10,000 miles of driving ago, I knew this was a problem, but um, I was under severe pressure, time constraints at the time to get it done. And one mistake I made was undoing this banjo bolt here, which goes into the exhaust manifold um, for the pressure sensor, which uh, connects onto the end of this tube here. And that's what tells the, the engine what the manifold pressure is inside here. Uh, the problem was I undid this and it was really tight and uh, it just began to spin. Oh, there's a nice train going past just, yeah, there we go. And it just began to spin and I couldn't tighten it up and I couldn't get it out. So uh, in the pressure of time that I had, I just did it up as much as I could, wrapped it in exhaust paste and hoped for the best. So 10,000 miles of driving later, as you can see here, it's... Uh, it's blown most of that off and you can see uh, it's obviously leaking exhaust gases so we've got an exhaust leak from there which is no good so um uh i have got a whole new exhaust manifold to put on but it is not quite as simple as it uh, seems to just replace the manifold on this although i can put my finger on most of the manifold bolts on the top and these three under here you've got a problem in this engine with this bad boy the dpf sits so close just here underneath the exhaust manifold. Literally, I can't even get my finger in between them just there. So it's a bit of a pain in the ass because when I uh, fitted this manifold, I had the whole um, head off the engine. So I uh, bolted the manifold up, the exhaust manifold, to the cylinder head while it was uh, on the floor. That was a hell of a lot easier and then I put it all in as one piece. So to take it off now it means I've got to, uh, I think, get under the car, undo the connection to the turbo that the DPF has and there's a couple of bolts I don't know if you can quite see them with the light there you go uh, that's where it's bolted to a, a bracket which mounts it to the engine and if I release the clamp on the flexi pipe to the exhaust there the DPF should just come loose a bit and then it should give me access to, to get bolts uh, to get the bolts out for the whole manifold but just before I do that I was just considering whether I might just have another go at getting this all this crap. Uh, getting this bolt out. So um, it might be that the bolt itself is rounded or threaded and um, that the manifold might still be fine. I think it's unlikely to be honest, but uh, I might just have a little go putting some uh, pressure to pull, pull that bolt out and see if it'll come out or not. I don't think it will because I tried last time, but I didn't try particularly hard. Um, so let's have a go and then failing that, it's a whole new manifold replacement. And that is what perseverance does for you. There you go. And that is what a completely stripped bolt looks like. So, uh, hmm, let's have a little think about what we do. Now, do we continue? Let's have a little look. Okay, so in case you don't know what banjo bolts are, um, if you have a little look at this, you can see that the bolt is hollow inside there. I don't know if you can quite pick up on that on the camera. The bolt is hollow and there are some holes in the side. So when the bolt is in position like this, it allows gas or exhaust gas or air pressure, whatever it is, that it's all fluid, you know, any kind of fluid, 
to pass through there into the collar of the banjo bolt and then off on some tubing to either feed something like a turbo or whatever or be a pressure sensor which is what this has has a little uh, pressure sensor bolted uh, to the end of it and uh, and that's how they work really it just allows you to clamp on and take uh, a fluid from one place to another and um, as you can see here what's happened is the steel bolt has just stripped itself so I need to have a look in the manifold now I might use my borescope here yeah, so always looking for an excuse to get that little tool out and have a little look and see whether the thread looks like it's damaged in the actual cast iron manifold let's have a look at that So I find myself with a decision to make. I've got a whole new manifold with uh, everything in place. Although this has obviously been cut off by the breaker, which is a bit short, but I'm sure I could fix. I'm sure I could fix uh, that onto the uh, the pressure sensor. There's my one. It's just coming off. Do I see? I haven't got uh, any spare bolts that would fit this at home, so I could wait and order one. But that means I can't do it today, and we all know that never feels good. Um, or, or I could risk taking this one off here and being a bit, doing a bit of a slap dust job and just uh, using, uh, I might have washers actually. I'll have, a, I'll have a look through what I've got to see if I've got any new washers that would fit. Mm, I'll have a look. And see whether I transfer this onto my manifold, because the thread looks fine. The equivalent of, uh, of that connection there in my manifold looks fine so it's just the bolt which is the problem child in this situation so but the risk is if I take this one off here and end up knackering this bolt taking it out then I've knackered this little setup I can't put this one on and then I've got to do it another day ah oh, sod it let's 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 just take this one off I'll be real gentle and see if I can get this one out without stripping the bolt that's what I'm gonna do because really That seemed easy enough. Why was mine so difficult? <laughs> it might be an idea to swap the tubes over because I have mangled the edges here which are gonna make it difficult to make a nice seal um, using whatever washers now. This side's all right, but this side, because I've been levering back with a screwdriver, has made it not so flush. Uh, I don't see much point in trying to smooth that out. And I've got a perfectly good one here. Skip forward a few steps. This was there. I've just removed it and unplugged everything that was on it just to get better access in here. I've also released the clamp that clamps the turbo to the DPF and I've loosened the same um, type of thing here which is what connects the manifold to the turbo. I've also removed uh, the nuts and bolts, there's two of them that attach to the back of the DPF to that bracket there. And I've been under the car and released um, the nut that clamps that flexi exhaust hose that you just see down there to the exhaust under the car. I can't quite pull it off though, I don't seem to have the man strength to do it. So I've just loosened it for now. And uh, now the task is to try and actually get the DPF out. It feels pretty solid though, it doesn't want to move, even though everything's disconnected from it. So. Let's just see if we can get that. I don't really need it all the way out, so I just need it out of the way, just so I can get under there, that's all. So, see if we can do a bit of that, and then uh, get the manifold off. Right then, sun's come out, and after a lot of difficult <laughs> access to, you know, squeeze and jiggery pokery, I've managed to get underneath, even though I've not removed the DPF, I've moved it enough to get my hand underneath here. And I've removed, I think, all the bolts and disconnected the end here where the EGR connects and everything's loosened. So, in theory, the manifold should just lift out now. So, let's see. Ow.
Now it's that potentially horrible moment when you've bought a spare part and you look at them both next to each other and think, oh, I hope they're the same. It is the same. I've had to look over. So now what we just need to do is uh, fit this banjo bolt back on uh, to here that are taken off and put the manifold back on with these new gaskets. So everyone that moaned at me last time because I was doing a cheapskate and not putting new exhaust uh, manifold gasket gaskets on, I'm doing it. And there you go, I've got the old ring ones. They'll do, good enough, set of three. Right, let's get it done. Okay, now it's worth pointing out that these exhaust gaskets have to go on the right way. Uh, I don't know if you can tell there, that's a nice stainless steel sort of looking uh, side and you've got this this raised part that's going to go uh, around the edge and if we flip it over it's a different material it's darker on this side this is a graphite coating which goes uh, on this side as opposed to this side the graphite coating has to go against the manifold so it's that way around that it's going to go onto the vehicle okay it's an important point just worth noting okay so what i'm doing is I've separated the nuts from all of the exhaust uh, manifold bolts. I'm just going to wind these in to the cylinder head. And then we're going to position the manifold. Well, first we're going to hang the gaskets on. So uh, our little friend here is going to hang on these bolts. And then we can position the manifold in place and then bolt it up. That's a theory anyway. Right, let's get these done. I'll see you in a minute. All right, that's all of our bolts in place. Now we just need to hang our gaskets. Now remember we need the graphite side, which is this side, not this side, to be against the manifold. So it has to go this way. There's one. go. Right, now the hard part, putting the actual manifold in. I'll try not to knock the camera. Now it's a little tricky considering I haven't removed the DPF properly. I'm just going to rest it there. Right. You also have to bear in mind what you can't quite see just down here is the, uh, the part where the EGR uh, is still in place now it's got a, a sort of flexy uh, it doesn't flex very much but a slightly flexible attachment but it gets in the way a little bit and it just uh... there we go okay at this stage manifolds back on uh, I've got the top bolt in here, just connecting there. The bottom one is really difficult to get to, so we'll leave that for a little bit later. Something that's worth noting is uh, where your manifold connects to your turbo, there's a little pin that needs to locate just correctly. So I've already connected that up and um, bolted this, uh, this V-band thing to, to pull it tight together. So it's already mounted nicely up there. Obviously the DPS is still out of place, so I've got space to get underneath. Anyway, yeah, so I'm just gonna do up all these bolts on the top and then bolts on the bottom and then uh, we're nearly there. I'm not gonna lie, that was quite fiddly. It's, uh, it's just quite awkward getting your hands down to the ones underneath. Um, probably you can tell. Anyway, it's time to torque them up. Um, don't miss this step out. They need talking up to about, I think, 10 to 13 newton meters. I'm just going to check that now. Apologize for the wind if you can hear it. All right, let's get that done and then we're getting on our way. Okay, with the manifold all talked up and in place and correctly connected down here to the turbocharger, the thing that's not in place now is the DPF. You can see it's hanging off its bracket a little bit there. So let's get the DPF in place, get that V-band tightened up, and then see what else to do. So let's get under the car. So uh, we're gonna jack the car up now and uh, get underneath and uh, reconnect that exhaust uh, bracket. Okay, so this here is the exhaust bracket where the bottom of the DPF flexi pipe comes down and connects to the rest of the exhaust. So we're gonna tighten this back up again. And while I'm down here, I don't know if you can quite see the DPF, up there i'm gonna try and maneuver it into position so i can drop the bolts back on get it in place 
So let's do that now. Right, this stage took me quite a while. Getting the DPF back into its place and back on its bracket took me forever. I just, I don't know, just maneuvering it into position. So for the wind, it was a nightmare anyway. Pressure pipe with the banjo bolt back on in place, bracket connected. Just time to drop this down now and connect up all of our sensors again and uh, we're nearly done. So what the problem was with the DPF is I just couldn't quite get it to move from about here to there. It was like, you know, three centimeters of movement I needed to get and it just wouldn't line up with the, uh, the sort of, uh, it's not a flange is it, but the way it meets up with the, uh, the end of the turbo. I just couldn't get it to push and cross. So a little tip for you, I ended up using a tire lever levered against the end of the house at uh, the end of the uh, engine bay to lever it and push it up where I need it whilst also then doing up the bolt on the back here to do it up it was a bit of a bit of a multitasking uh, issue it was a bit difficult anyway but uh, just a little pointer for anyone else in case you run into that problem just aligning the DPF everything's plugged in now nearly there the only difference being this uh, I don't know if you can see the little tube there you go, a little bit of hose that joins the end of that pressure pipe attaching to the manifold. It's a bit shorter than it should be because the breaker's yard cut the uh, the end off where the uh, original connector would have been. So it's a little bit shorter, which means it doesn't quite sit up here in its little uh, black plastic housing. So I'm just going to cable tie it up next to it or something like that to keep it uh, from flapping around. Uh, and there we go, and that's about it. Put the rest of the uh, intake back on. Don't forget to plug the muff uh, back in. There we go. No warning lights, all good. Right, let's give it a quick drive. And we uh, can call it a day, I think.